So hi everyone. Uh, so today we have a very very special guest with us. Uh, he's a computer programmer. He is uh, he's an international grandmaster on uh, code forces, and he became that when he was in high school. He has uh, he has won the international Olympiad of informatics uh, in 2020, and along with that, he also runs a YouTube channel with more than two lakh subscribers. Right. So this is all what he has done while he is still 18. Right. So we have with us William Lin and thanks a lot, William, for joining in and uh, really looking forward to this conversation. Uh, welcome yeah. To our channel. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Glad to be here. Can't, okay. get, can't wait to get started. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, so William, in this, uh, in this call, just want to talk to you about, uh, what all you have been doing and like, just to get to know you a little better rather than trying to, uh, like we all know you are an amazing computer programmer. That's not what we want to test, right? Uh -huh. just want to know yeah. you, like who is William Lin? We want to understand that a little better. So, so first of all, would love to understand like, what got you started with this, right? Like, how did you get started with programming and how did you get started with competitive programming in general? Okay, so programming, it was, uh, I saw this video on YouTube about, uh, I used to play the Legos a lot, and then there was this uh, video on YouTube where someone built an arcade game out of uh, Legos. And then I was really surprised because the game, like in the game, the, like, the game is supposed to react to your input. And then I didn't know how to do that. It was just like simple Legos. And then my dad told me that, in fact, there was this um, computer behind it. And then that's when like, I like, got really interested into it. And then I bought, I, uh, they bought me a Lego robotics kit. So then I started playing with that. And later on, like, they realized that I was just making games on the tiny screen of like the Lego um, computer brick. So they said, why not just move on to programming onto the computer instead. And then later on, I started off uh, learning to program on Java. And then I was in like third or fourth grade. So wow. yeah, from that there on, like things just kept escalating. Um, like I basically just uh, programmed more projects. I learned a bit more, langu more languages and yeah. So that was how I got started with programming. And as for competitive programming, so, um, so one day I received, so somehow I registered for hackering. I don't know how, but one day I received an email from them saying that there was going to be this competition and that there would be prizes, like basically um, t-shirts were the top 100 and being the, like I was quite ambitious and I thought that winning a t-shirt from an online contest would be cool. And then I also thought that like I would, I also thought that I had a lot of experience. So um, I decided to join the contest and then that's when I realized that I did not have much knowledge of algorithms and data structures. And my code was um, just implementing what's already hard enough. But then I realized that like the time limits actually mattered a lot as well. So then for that contest, I did not do that well. But, um, but then the problems were interesting. Like I saw that uh, the solutions that were used, they had uh, really interesting tricks and then there were interesting algorithms that like basically this field I never knew about, that I never knew existed, uh, basically intrigued me. So I wanted to learn more about it. So I basically, um, did more problems and then the more I did the more I fell into love with this and this just basically kept going until yeah and I just kept doing this for three years until now okay so that was how I got started and also like I want I wanted to like um, win that t-shirt like yeah I didn't get it the first time but then that was one of my um, that was one of my motivators behind me uh, practicing for the first few months. Okay. Okay. So when was this? Like, when did you get that email and when did you start like uh, into competitive programming? That was in, that was in like May of 2017, I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So uh, then like, so you joined this contest, you didn't really win uh, the first time, then basically, like which platform did you start doing content programming on? Uh, uh, so Hacker Inc. was the one I started with, because that was like the contest. And then like naturally I found like, just, just by, just by like while searching for more like resources, I stumbled, of course, I stumbled upon uh, Code Forces and Code Chef. So I think I definitely did practice there. And yeah, I think those were the ones which um, were used when I was like early on for me. Okay, okay. So, uh, so one thing that I want to understand from you, right? Like, so one thing that happens with everybody who starts doing computer programming is they reach a certain level, but they get stuck at that, right? Like, so they, then they don't understand like how to actually move forward. Like, did you have such situations with you? Did you feel like I'm getting stuck? I'm not able to move forward. And like, how did you solve that? It seems like you get stuck. Like it may seem like it, but it's really just because um, it's, it's much harder to improve once you've like um, improved after a certain level, like your skill level, like at first it increases by a lot, like, but then like later on, it, it doesn't increase as much. It just, it still goes up, but then it, um, that you have to put much more work in to actually notice that um, your efforts are paying off. Okay, okay. So one thing a lot of people would say, right, like uh, mm -hmm. that you are extremely smart, right? Like you are extremely, you have a, you would have a very high IQ and like that's what has led to you doing extremely well. So like what, I'm, I'm sure you're extremely smart, like I'm not doubting that, but like what, like what mm -hmm. part uh, is, how much is it the smartness and how much is it the hard work that somebody has to put in, like to do well in competitive work? I know that I've definitely practiced a lot and I definitely know that many, um, many of the grandmasters and above, they've um, done like a bunch of practice to get to where they are today. But uh, one thing I uh, go by is that um, even if I'm limited by like some, like may maybe like smartness, as you said, like just, just getting to, uh, just improving to a level, which I was not at before is already like, that, that was, that was my main goal when I started. I just wanted to be better than like, um, what I was originally at. So I, I wasn't, um, yeah, I, ju I just want I just want to improve, but not necessarily be at the top. All right. So, uh, like, who is your biggest inspiration? Right. Like, so, like, like, if you have to like tell me one person, like, who you really inspired, like, who you who you are really inspired by, like, anybody, like, you can... um. So, I wouldn't say that I'm that inspired by people. Like, um, I, I think that's. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I'm not really that type of person to be, um, like, uh, inspired by people, but, uh, if I had to choose, I'd say it would be, uh, Benjamin Chi. So basically, uh, the legendary grandmaster on Code Forces, and he's also won IOI twice for the U.S. So I think I, yeah, he kind of inspired me a bit. So I think that would be the answer to your question. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Now I would like to shift a little bit of gears, right? Like I uh, would like to mm -hmm. talk about your view on competitive programming. And so for example, uh, like, let me, let me come to uh, the context behind this, right? Like, so a lot of people in India are doing competitive programming and their main motive is to get a job. And they believe that if they do competitive programming, they will get the right referrals. They will get into the right companies. Right, like uh, so, like like all these uh, Amazon, Facebook, Google, right? Like these are sort of the companies that everybody wants to be at, right? Yeah. And that's the main motivation that everybody has to do basically CP and get started with CP. So, would love to like uh, get your I like. Uh, what do you think about what is the importance of competitive programming if somebody wants to become a software engineer? So, I definitely think because 
a lot of companies, they have um, interview tests or like, they, they, they have these technical interviews which literally ask you about algorithm questions. So I think doing competitive programming definitely uh, helps with it. And, but uh, as you, as many people know, like it's not, unless you're doing some really specific job relating algorithms in software development, you are less likely to use the stuff you learn in competitive programming. Like uh, knowing basic algorithms and stuff is helpful, but then uh, I, think, I think it has gone to the point where the scope of te technical interviews is uh, way past what you would actually see in your day-to-day -day job. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So that, that actually brings, to, bring, brings us to a very interesting question because mm -hmm. once you join a job, what you need to do yeah. is development, right? Like you need to work upon mm -hmm. web development, you need to work upon Android application development, iOS development. So what's your thought on that? Like as a, as a budding software engineer, should I spend almost all of my time doing CP? Should I spend some time doing development as well? And like, would love to understand your perspective as well. Like, do you plan to spend more time learning outside computer programming, getting into development as well? Like, is that part of your plan or not? Uh, yeah, I'm actually learning, starting to, I've been learning some uh, development recently as well. So I think having, because I had like no experience at all in this. So I think like having some experience would definitely be helpful. And as for the general person, um, honestly, it's hard to say for me because um, I, I, I personally, I spend a lot of time in programming, but um, so I can, so I it's like when I, if I want to look for jobs, I can actually like have developed um, both sides of my like skills, like both the CP and the like actual development. Uh, before, before the like, before the average programmer, um, it really depends on the company they're trying to get into, because uh, I've I've heard that maybe I'm not really sure about this, but I've heard that in places like Google, uh, the technical interview is really important. So whereas in maybe like smaller companies, they might actually look at the development skills you have or projects you've built. So it definitely depends on where you're trying to apply to. Okay, okay. So where do you plan to apply? Like, uh, do you plan to, like, wh what's your feeling? Like, what do you want to do? Like, I, I, I heard that you were going to MIT. That's, that's amazing, right? So, uh, yeah. to, like, I'll, I'll come to that, like, why you're going to MIT and all of that, right? But would like to understand, what do you plan to do post-MIT? Like, are you planning to be, do a PhD, like, get into academia? Like, do you plan to join a company like Google, Facebook, start something yourself, or join a smaller company? Like, what's your thought process on that? Well, I actually have not planned to finish MIT yet. Like, actually, because I, I just don't know. Um, at this point, I don't know what I'll be doing in the future. Like, even just one year in the future, um, things can change very fast. And you might have to uh, just suddenly make a 90 degree turn in where you're heading and it, it, in terms of your career. So I know that I'll do something related to programming but there's still many choices which are available for me. So right now I'm just kind of um, trying different things to see what I like and what sort of doors open for me. Okay, okay. But like if you have to make a choice today, sorry, I'm pushing you on this, but like if you have to make a choice uh -huh. today that uh, either you have oh. to join Google or you have to join like a very early startup, start something yourself, or maybe uh, like I'm getting PhD is not something that you're thinking about right now, but like if one of these three, what will be your choice? This is tough. I probably wouldn't, um, I'll probably throw away the PhD first because uh, I don't like um, education that much. And then I would, because I don't actually know the uh, required skill level uh, I need to join like an early stage startup. I don't know if I sh could actually like be of use, but if I could, then I would probably choose the startup because it seems more interesting. Okay, okay. 
I can't click. I can't see it here. Okay, so now coming to the question on MIT, right? Like, so uh, why did you actually like? So, for example, seems like you are an amazing programmer, and I can like I'm absolutely sure you'll get like. Uh, you will get a job at startup as well if you want to like uh, just like continuing on the last question like so if you want to join facebook google i'm sure like they'll be happy to have you as well so what's the thought process here like and you don't like education as well right like so why why yeah. why do you not join a company right now so because i don't um yeah, first of all my parents like actually want me to uh like go to college they like the safe route and then but also because like i guess it would be it would be good to try it out and see like what happens um because people might still value a degree depending on the person they are mm -hmm. so like i just have not made a clear decision yet on whether or not I want a degree or not. So right now I'm just um, I'm just playing it safe. Okay. For now. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. So uh, like, what all worked for you in terms of your application to MIT? Right? Like, uh, did you have really good grades? Did you have really good SAT scores? Or like, how big a part competitive programming played uh, in your admit to MIT? I think it was, I think it was like 99% of my application. Like basically, the, I, at that time I had an ROI silver medal. I think it was, yeah, it was 99% of my application. If you looked at my other, other aspects of my application, like you could find, you could find like 10 or 20 people in my school, which are better than me in those aspects. But then um, it was really the, is really competitive programming that stood out to MIT. Okay. okay. So now, now that you uh, are at MIT and like you have to uh, work along with all the academics, right? Like, like it must be pretty hectic. So, do you still get time for competitive programming? Like, do you still spend a lot of time doing it? Right now, I don't spend a lot of time doing competitive programming because I'm uh, trying to expand more into um like as i said earlier like other sides of programming such as development and uh the classes classes are hard but um it's uh but classes are hard and and because uh, i want to spend time on other fields so like both of these factors is um why I don't spend as much time as competitive on competitive programming as I did before. Okay. 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 Sure. So, okay. Let's shift a little bit of gears now. Would love to uh, ask you a uh, few things outside CP, right? Like, let's not talk about CP. Uh, well, let's know, get to know you a little bit, right? So, so first uh, of all, I don't. Your parents uh, don't like absolutely Indian parents, right? Like, like, like the, exactly the way Indian parents would like want to take the safe route. They would want the kid to get the degree. Even uh, I think all Asian parents are the same. <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. So I can totally guess that, right? So, so do they happen uh, to be from a software engineering background? Uh, like, what do they do? Uh, I don't know. Oh, my, my dad did um, uh, made like hardware before. And he knew a bit of programming, like okay. so he was able to get me started when I was young. So yeah, I think that's the background for my parents. Okay, okay, perfect. So uh, do you happen to have a girlfriend? Ah, uh, are you joking? <laughs> no, I'm not joking. I'm serious. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm sure a lot of people want to know. They didn't have the courage to ask you. So, do you have a girlfriend yet? A lot of them. Wait, is, it, is this, um, is the answer not obvious? <laughs> like, <laughs> of course the answer is no. Oh man, but, okay, okay. Yeah. So is there a minimum requirement I mean, of some sort of rating on code forces for somebody to be? Oh <laughs> uh, no, it's not that. Um, it's, I think it's, um, I, it's not, I think the way, um, 
So if you're a competitive programmer, if you want to get a girlfriend, the girlfriend will choose based on your rating. And if your rating is too high, then that means you don't, you spend too much time practicing and you don't spend time on her. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying you have to choose one of the two, right? Like, is that the message to budding competitive programmers? Yeah, so so like having a low rating isn't isn't a bad thing. I mean, you, uh, I mean, it's like you probably have a better chance of getting a girlfriend. Okay, fair, fair. <laughs> sure. So, uh, what do you like to do outside competitive programming? Like, what do you like? Do you play any sport? Like, what do you like to spend your time uh, on, like outside? Of I don't spend a lot of time outside of programming because programming is uh, enjoyable for me. But I do. I do um, take time to um, do some exercise. So, like, I play uh, tennis two times per week, and uh, I, also, I also do some running. So, yeah. Okay. So, how much time do you spend on your computer every day? <laughs> A lot. Like, um, like, basically, there would be a pandemic outside and I wouldn't know. <laughs> okay, okay, sure, sure. So uh, perfect, so this was really, really uh, fun. I really enjoyed uh, talking to you. Uh, I hope you yeah. enjoyed it as well. So, mm. um, so I have a small request to make. I would, mm. uh, instead of, I think like, uh, I've seen a bunch of videos where people have asked questions and you have completely like cracked that like without taking any time. So instead of doing uh. that, I would want to reverse it where you're not challenging me, uh, no, that's not the plan. So you're challenging the audience, right? Like, so would love to, uh, so if you can share a question with me, I would love to share that with the audience and uh, I'll add that in the description box. And mm -hmm. the first 10 people who submit it to us, I'll share all the details in the description box and like the first 10 people sharing it to us will get some rewards from Coding Ninjas. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, I hope that works. Like you will do that. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll think of a problem in like the next like probably today or tomorrow and i'll send it over to harsh absolutely sounds great sounds great thank you so much william thank you so much really hey thank you yeah this is great yeah, yeah. very glad thank to be you. here okay. and See you. Bye, -bye. Mm -hmm. bye for new programming updates and videos subscribe to coding ninjas channel